Hey peeps, Ingrid Marsh here from Soul for Living with Ingrid and this, yes I've got a new name for it, it's called the Getting Your Groove Back show and my mission is a simple one my darling, my mission is to spread a new vibration in the world, a new vibration of light, a new vibration of love and a new vibration of happiness my darling. But anyway, helping us to get our groove back today, you know I'm going to dance when I say this because every time I say her name I can't help but dance. But it's the spiritual flower lady. <laughs> she makes me feel groovy again. She gives the, just the name. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> I just love her. So we've got Yvette with us today. She's a spiritual flower lady. And here's the thing, she really helps women who have, you know, kind of lost their identity, lost their self-esteem. But hear how she does it, it's quite extraordinary. She has this gift where she's able to see angels in flowers. Now, when you first think of that, you think, what, the flowers in the park and places like that? No, the regular bunch of flowers you see at home, she connects with angels through there and help you to connect with yourself better. But who better to explain this? But it's <laughs> what she does, but I just adore her. And I'm a huge, anything to do with flowers gets me excited. I love flowers that at my soul. So Yvette, over to you, my darling. How are you, my lovely? Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you. A lovely introduction. Yes. I'm not even going to dance for that myself. I might have to start um, doing that as I introduce myself. <laughs> but I did it on an introduction. Someone commented on it that how much they loved it. You know, like the spiritual flower lady. So yeah, you'd have to bring it in yourself with that as your dance. Yeah, I might have to do. And that kind of reminds me because I was just talking to somebody else the other day about how flowers communicate in dancing because if you're out in nature and you, you look up at the trees and some young trees, they sort of move in the wind. I'm all about that connection with the wind and the sounds it makes with the trees and the rustling of the leaves. And the flowers, when they they do a dance, when, you know, the gentle breeze kind of moves through them. So there is that connection. Yeah, we are so on the same page, we aren't we? Because that's what <laughs> I love too when I'm in amongst nature and the wind and the flowers, just that connecting with nature itself it is so fun. Yeah. Isn't it, my darling I hear you but my darling before we go into that I just want to talk about life before you realized that you had this gift where you were able to connect with angels in this way and I believe it actually comes from a, a difficult time in your life can you tell us a bit about that yeah it all um so I've been I studied a flower course learning how to do flower arrangements and things like this and as I was learning all of those techniques about creating flower arrangements I also um was introduced to a book called Flower Therapy and that spoke about the angels and the spirits of nature and I thought that was a bit above me it's like you know I don't kind of get that just yet but I've always been on a spiritual journey so it was waiting for it to fall into place so I was just there just connecting with flowers and telling people about the messages behind flowers and the angels that connected to it from what I've been learning and you know from messages I was getting and then um, it really hit home to me what it was all about was when my dad passed away because I used to um, sell flowers on a stall in Greenwich Market. Um, and it didn't feel like it was the right place because people weren't getting the messages. Some people understood it. People who love flowers like yourself would feel there's an energy, that connection there. But when my dad passed away, it was like um, having this blank canvas. It was like, though I know children are young, and they, you know, their life's crushed when they're so young and they lost their, their parent. But I mean, I turned 50 and I still felt geez, my whole life is kind of crumbled. There was just this massive blank canvas, big hole, and this gap that needs to be filled. Um, somebody was speaking to me and I, you know, they know my work and they was just saying, well, why don't you bring your dad into your flower work? Because my dad was an avid gardener and loved, he could tell you so many things about the plants and, you know, he's more like a herbal kind of guy. And to help me come to terms with him passing, I kind of took my flower work to another level, as I would say. So I created um, flower therapy workshops and I call them therapy workshops because it's a therapeutic thing you get when you're working with the energy of flowers. 
And through that, I was, I realized that my connection was deeper with the flowers because I always felt there's this deeper meaning to flowers than what we see with our eyes. It's not just the beauty alone that gets that connection. There is something deeper. Um, and through losing him, got me to teach people how to create flower arrangements, but it also got me to teach them the other side of it, that the messages that lie behind each flower. And in my workshops, I would get people to, it's all about them taking time out because we can just go through life. Even when we lose somebody, <coughs> we sometimes have, everyone has different ways of coping with grief. And sometimes we feel if we just shoulder, shoulder on with life, we're going to, we're going to heal ourselves and we're going to get on, you know, that could be someone's way of healing with grief, but you, what you're kind of doing is pushing it to the back and you're not dealing with it. So I found time out with myself was my way of doing with it, healing and particular flowers that help release low energy and um, heavy energy you have yourself. And it's a cleansing flower is a white rose. And I had, was constantly working with a lot of white roses as well. So that was helping me. So what I brought into my flower therapy workshops is getting people to connect with the flowers. So you're not just going to be making a flower arrangement. I was getting you to take your time. It's all about breathing it in as well. When you take a walk out of nature, I get people to breathe in. You breathe when you're walking through a park, you kind of slow down. And this is me bringing nature indoors for people to close off their minds, shut themselves down and just to get that connection with the flowers. And it's amazing what people did get from it. So it's all about finding that connection with, it was like a soul connection. You kind of connect them to a flame that's within you that, you know, to heal, to reignite passion within you, to reignite um, things that you enjoy doing. And that's how through the flower fragrance workshops, I realized I was connected, how my work was to help women move through things and to sort of move through their life and get on with their life. So I'm going back to the bit about when your dad passed and you hit in this blank, you saying that you were 50. It's weird because my mum passed recently. And as you were saying that, I felt a bit emotional actually, because I was 53, my mum died this year. And another friend of mine, her dad died. And she talked about the same thing about hitting this blank. You, this blank canvas, yeah. you like, what's it all about Frankie type thing. And you're yeah. starting again. And like you say, it feels nuts that holding a minute. Yeah, because you think my thing was like, he never made it to my birthday, like just a few few weeks from my birthday. And think, but you're a big 50 year old, you know, yeah. can I grow up. But it's not so much as that. It's there's something missing. Um, you know, there's, and this, this has brought me really looking into grief in so many different ways. And now, a lot of the work I do when I'm doing flower arrangements is for sympathy tributes and I get such joy out of doing it. And my son once said to me, how do you get so much pleasure out of someone's sadness? And I'm like, I'm giving them a piece of happiness through the flowers. Mm. Flowers are healing, they do so much for you. And when I do work with my flowers, I kind of open up this energy within the flowers. I'm calling on the spirits of nature, I'm calling on the angels that work with them to really amplify the messages so that people, when they see it and they feel it, they really take all that energy in. And when I do um, work and, you know, there's one mother in particular when she lost her son. Um, so I've done her, the sympathy arrangements of her and her family. And then, you know, time's gone on, birthday flowers and, um, you know, when they're having remembrance for him. And she just said, I'd just like to tell you that I love seeing your flowers and I love the healing. They, you're actually helping me heal. So this is the beauty that flowers do. When you take time out, when you get that connection, when you feel energy, and that's what flowers have. They have a lot of energy when you sit still, just to feel that they do heal. And everybody feels that healing that you are kind of trying to get people to learn about. So I understand, I really get that, that for, for this to happen, though, we really need to slow down. Yeah, we need to yeah. disconnect from the noise of the outside world because we could then effectively miss it, is what you're saying. Yeah. So typically then, in a, in a flower therapy session, we've slowed down now. We haven't got the outside world coming at us and that noise of the outside world. We're in this flower therapy session. So what happens, are you saying that um, there'd be a particular... In fact, tell us what happens in a, in a, in a therapy session? What, what's typical? So if I go back to the flower therapy workshop, because this yeah. is where I intuitively choose all different flowers that I know somebody in that workshop is going to need. Right. So when it comes to flowers, 
they um they connect your um chakras there's a chakra connection and there's angel angelic connection and you know this so to interrupt, some people don't know what chakras mean if you're in the spiritual world so, if you don't just mind breaking that down a bit so our chakras, the seven main chakras that everybody speaks about. So they are like, you can call them like spinning wheels within ourselves. So you've got the crown, you've got the third eye, the throat, your heart chakra, and it goes down to your um, solar plexus. And then just below your navel is like your sacral chakra. And then you've got your root chakra, which is kind of like to the, bottom, the base of your spine. And there's many other different chakras, but these are the seven main ones that people connect to. And the flowers have that connection with them as well. And it's not just the color, because there's different colors that associate with the chakras, but the flowers don't necessarily connect with the chakras that way. There is a color connection, but there's also the flower itself has a connection to that certain area within you. And I encourage people to, so in the flower therapy workshops, I'm getting you to, you're literally walking through that room and you're having fun because you're gonna learn how to create something but I'm also getting you to tap into your uniqueness, your creativity, because it's also explained to people how different we all are. And we've all got the same bunch of flowers, but everybody's bouquet is gonna turn out completely differently. Some people are gonna have it so big, some people small. This is a reflection of who we are. And this is one thing I set up to people. Oh my gosh, I love this. I love that. Because it shows, because like I said, it could be the same bunch of flowers. But by how it's almost a form of self-expression, really, isn't yeah. it, what you're saying? Yeah. And in itself, it shows our individuality. And I love that because these are one of the things I, I love individuality. I love the fact that we're all so different, but the world doesn't necessarily allow people that room for self-expression. It's all about fitting in and conforming. But here is a really wonderful opportunity for them to self-express yeah. and to find a part of their identity, almost. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's the beat of it. They don't, so they will have the same flowers, but some people might not connect with all of the flowers. So some people um, at the end of it, I'm going, why didn't you use those flowers? Because I didn't really feel that connection with them. I didn't really like them. And the beauty of it also is I get people to choose their own flowers because some people look for perfection in something. So they see a rose. I don't want my rose to have any little black things or, you know, the outer petals. I'll discard them because they don't look neat and beautiful. Well, some people might like that. Some people might like the quirkiness of the rose tilting off at an angle. So it's up to everybody what they use. So they go and choose. So that's the first connection you get with flowers. You're choosing what it is that you, which flower is attracting you. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is I get people, where you're creating your arrangements, take your time and look at the flowers and what connects with you. And at the end of the workshop, I get them to look at, we, I go through the list of all the flowers and what they mean. They don't get to see it until the end. So at the end, it's like a little worksheet. You flip it over at the end because I don't want anyone cheating and saying, I hate to do it because of this. So it's getting you to connect to what, what you feel. It's all about what you feel. So when you turn that page over and I'm reading through them, it's, then it's like, how many people were drawn to this flower? And then it's reasons why. And then they understand that actually some part of their reason was within that flower meaning, whether it's the angel whether it could have been the colour they were wrong, whether it's a chakra it's connected to, or just the message it had behind it. So this is not feeding anyone any ideas. It's just getting you to relax your mind. In, in the workshop, we also do the meditation to really calm you down, just to quiet the mind. And that's what it's all about. And it's getting you to feel. And it's lovely when people, you know, some people have attended, like, I've never done anything like this before. And I've never felt energy from a flower before because I get them to sit with their hands over it a particular flower of their own choice, which they feel connected to and get what they feel from it. And some people freaks them out. I've done a flower presentation in um, a company and I've got, you know, boardroom, got these very intelligent women, <laughs> engineers and such to sit down and, you know, connect with these flowers just for, they had about 15 minutes and they close their eyes. I'm like, close your eyes, really tune in. But I was watching the expressions in a lot of them. And there was one woman kept opening her eyes, looking, kept opening, thinking I was doing something. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, she said, I thought you were doing something to me because I could feel something between my hand and the flower. And I'm just that that's the energy. That's what you've slowed down enough to know that you can feel something. Oh, man, this is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. And I love that you in company workshops doing this as well. It's And it's... Um... It's funny because I do like soul space and get people to create their own soul spaces and what have you. And it's funny when you go into corporates and organizations and to get them actually to disconnect from that 
and really have that soul connection with something. It, it's really yeah. so beautiful. So it's wonderful to know that you get into organisations and know this too. And the other thing I love, because I've been on numerous um, uh, flower arrangement courses and that kind of thing, especially in my past, some really expensive ones as well. No <laughs> one. Yeah, <not> sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on they were quite eye watering um but no one stopped to make us take it to that next level that deepness for us to connect with it on a soul level I, I mean I find flowers only really soulful anyway but mm. no one actually stopped so well actually you know you gravitate to that flower for this reason and like I said I'm, I'm in your introduction you talk about you know creating a greater connectiveness with yourself or so I hope you're hoping you to connect yeah. with yourself on a deeper level and uh, but no one has explained it like that and I just think that just listening to you was just like fit in my soul as I was sitting here that is so beautiful my darling yeah that's the beauty of it it's getting people to it's so do you know my whole purpose could be is to get people to see the beauty of flowers and then to understand the messages that are behind them so you just see you're not just seeing them for what they are face value you're getting to feel there's an energy behind it and the more flowers you're introduced to the more you're going to you know, if a flower catches your eye, you're going to go, oh, why did that daffodil really catch my eye? You know, when something stands out to you and something jumps out at you. And that is simply because there is something that, you know, it's like, I've got something to tell you. Come over here, have a listen. Sit down on that park bench and just chill right. for a minute. That leads on to my next question, actually, about the angels in flowers. And I love the fact at the beginning that, you know, when you first heard about this, you thought, oh, that's a bit, you know, cranky type thing, which is what happens when we start having these feelings and these edges, how you just sit on it's a bit loopy loo. Um, but you still trusted yourself. So thank you so much. And this size, you know, to me, that's <laughs> nice getting your group back is trusting that thing, that thing that is in you. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, and not dismissing it. So I'm really grateful that was, oh, that's a bit cranky and you walked away from it because that was your gift and your message for us to share with the world. So that's yeah. really beautiful. Um, so let's talk about when you talk about that, because like I said, that's going to sound a bit like cranky to people. But the way you explained it then actually took away the crack and it's just like, well, why did that flower catch my eye? And like I said, there's, mm. there's, there are angels that, you know, that you're aware of. This is a gift that you have that you're aware of that is in there for with, with a message. Um, but yeah, tell us a bit about this whole angels and flowers thing. Like share, share a bit more about that with us. So from what I was learning from the book, there's angels associated with flowers. We talk about spirits of nature. So the spirits of nature, there's angels connected to flowers. It's, there's a deep connection to flowers. We look at garden gnomes as just little ornaments or things of mystery that people say, you know, that aren't really real. But, you know, you could look back from the time of old where gnomes garden gnomes are like the protectors of the land and you've got the fairies which no one really believes in but we speak about them so much in the there in all of the fairy tale books and behind every story there is a there is a drop of reality so the spirits of nature are all you know elementals um as we're saying fairies gnomes and angels where you the angels this is all part of the messages that lie behind the flowers so you have the flower message and you've got archangels that are associated with those flowers and archangels have um it kind of they're associated with certain things a representation of things so we've got um archangel gabriel if people know of archangel gabriel they know him as a, um, a person of communication he's always depicted with like a trumpet and so a lot of the flowers that he's connected to do have kind of like a form of a trumpet and the daffodil was one of those because there's a sense of free there's there's not just one angel for each flower there's quite a few that are connected to them and sometimes it is just one angel so it's when you are if like you as I mentioned the daffodil you're connected to, you found that daffodil caught your attention the message for the daffodil is um communicate and it's kind of tapping into yourself and you know remind yourself of rivers be message with it is like rivers of love flow within you so when you're speaking speak from your heart space and let you know your messages come out and the archangel um Gabriel connected with that will aid you in speaking with your messages of love. So you're calling in the angels when you choose to communicate with this particular flower. So when I do flower arrangements, I always use at least three flowers that are going to convey the message that you're trying to get across. If it's for your business, if it's for a function, there are going to be three main flowers in there that will be there for that reason to kind of associate themselves with the message you're trying to get across, which then goes out to other people. 
this. For example, if our Gerberas, they're all about, if it's that networking event, you had Gerberas, they're all about communication as well. So it's all the energy flows out to everybody who has, who has come there with that purpose. So you have like Archangel Jophia, who's uh, an angel of beauty, um, and getting us to see the world through be- you know, beautiful eyes and um, connecting to the beauty that you have within you. So she's associated with um, yellow roses. So whenever I, there are times that I can be doing work um, from doing readings and, or, you know, just doing things in general, just from everyday life, I can sometimes be overwhelmed with a lot of energy. Like it's really bright, it feels yellow. You know that your future's so bright, you've got, just got to wear shades. It feels that magnetic energy. And I know that that's the energy um, of her with some of the flowers that I'm working with. And particular one is like a yellow rose, which she comes shining through for Oh, how wonderful. So it's, you just find that what you feel and get connected with a flower, there is that communication. So you with the spirits of the flower, whatever spirit is working with the flower, but then there's also that angelic connection that comes through. Wow. And that's interesting is that, like I say, it's not just in your personal life, it could be messages in your work life as well. Yeah. That there, there might be messages as well. Interesting. Yeah, in every, every, every aspect of your life, there is, there is yeah, that. Yeah. So can, we, can you use this type of therapy to, to manifest um, things also? Besides yeah, there, um, there are flowers that help you. Also, I've lost, I can't hear you. Have you got me, got me now? Is it gone? Yeah, now I've got you, yeah. Right, yeah. So I was just saying that, can it be used for manifestation purposes as well? Yeah. So um, one of the flowers, so flowers, the messages behind them is um, like to raise your vibration or you've got like, there's the yellow lily, which is often associated with um, financial healing, raising your vibration. So, you know, your financial situation is going to come to an end, the, the down part of your financial situation is going to come to an end. And it's like, there's going to be an influx for you coming through. How much it is, it's an abundance thing. So it could be money or it could be in a, you know, an abundance of love. It could be an abundance of many other things. But whenever we think of manifestation and abundance, we always think of money, but it isn't necessarily yeah. so. Yeah. It can be anything that you kind of want. And there are flowers there that are there for your wishes, like the sweet pea. If you're drawn to a sweet pea, that helps you manifest your wishes and it gets you to, the message with it is to visualize with your wishes. So I, a couple of weeks ago, um, I did, um, I'm doing like Zoom parties where I'm just doing one card reading for everybody to get messages through. And before we begin, I pull a card, a flower that will represent, you know, everybody can get something from. And it was a sweet piece. So that for everybody receiving their individual messages, there was an overall message as well to manifest what it is that you want in life. So sweet peas are one of those flowers that help you with manifesting. Right, cool. It sounds amazing. And um, what about for, like cleansing your space? Can flowers be used? Can this be used for that? Oh, yeah, definitely. So we so spoke about but what, the white rose. Right. One of those. Sorry, I'm talking over you because it stops and then I can suddenly see you moving again. Yeah, that's all right. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. The white rose is um, my go-to flower. Love it all the time. I This is my space here. And sometimes when I um, begin my day, I feel really heavy you know sometimes you just feel that something's not right so rather than beat myself up about it and generally I if I've done a lot you know work done some flower arrangements I've always generally seem to have white roses here and even if I don't the cards that I have I just bring in that energy of the white rose and I've done lots of meditations that I record with the white rose so I can go back to you know some form of meditation with it and you literally just find yourself releasing you could just be um just for the energy change or it could be releasing through tears but I literally I was turned north my flowers are generally that works for it, that direction and I just find that it just releases a lot and the African violet is another one that you can bring into your space to release and I use it um for clearing my phone cleansing the energy around your phone because you know your phone covers all social media platforms so so much negativity going on in you know different places that you you know you've clicked on something you've kind of brought that energy onto your phone the laptop's the same thing so i use it often to just clear my energy clear the room um and like your laptop you know i've, never thought, I've never thought of cleansing my laptop and my phone <laughs> I've never thought of that. that cleansing is also once you've sort of done that cleansing part of it then you start to think okay 
it, they would encourage you to, it leads you, all the messages from the flowers lead you on to do some stuff that you yeah. are not thinking you need to do in your life. So we think of, you know, cleansing your energy. I'm going to go out and ground myself. I'm going to go do with the trees and this, that, and the other. But you come back and the same things that you have got surrounding you are still there. So it could be just for you to clear your old emails, to clear some, you know, text messages that are a bit rude to somebody or they were horrible to you and you've gone back and forth and you've just left them there. That's stagnant energy sitting there. So it is, if you've gone out and cleared your mind around something, come back in and clear the area that you are. It's also, you know, changing the energy around where you've been sitting and things like this. So I do love, my go-to is a white rose. I love a white rose. It's beautiful in itself, but I know that it's going to do a cleansing for me as well. Okay. My favourite flower is ranunculus. Anything around that? Oh, ranunculus. That was my first flower that I actually came into um, contact with. That's the flower that made me realise there was something more to flowers than the beauty of their eyes right now different colors for me the red ranunculus was the one and that was kind of um i'm talking about chakras again where it's just getting to your ground it's your surface it's where your foundation is going to lie this is like where do you begin this is the start of you so the ranunculus that red ranunculus was like right you know you now know that there's something else going on because you've looked inside i literally fell inside this yeah um I was doing a session with somebody, they were doing something on me, ex trying to get me to explain what it is, because I said there's something about these flowers that I need to share, I need to really get in, you know. And I remember looking at this bunch of flowers on the table, and my husband got me some flowers for my anniversary, and I remember this ranunculus, because it's so small, and it just opens up so beautifully big, but looks delicate, but yet it's strong, because you can't, it looks like it's paperish, but you can't literally take it and rip it, it's not gonna be that easy. No. So you have to really have a bit of a tug on it. And that's what made me feel, this is the root of what you're doing. So that red ranunculus is really associated with your foundation, the root of who you are. And it's for you to, you know, build yourself upon, to start, that's your little stepping stone, to build your bricks to move up. Oh, wow. And that, I wow. fell in love with that flower. That has took me right inside right in. It's such a, and you just, the way you described it then. I just thought, oh my God, honestly, you've got me sitting here today just feeling like, oh, like <laughs> so calm and beautiful and happy and love, you know. Never the way you just That's the beauty of them. Say that again, darling. That's the beauty of what the flowers do. In a healing yeah. session, you just, you wake up, so you're just out for about 20 minutes to half an hour when I'm doing any healing sessions. And it's, again, intuitively, um, there's flowers that come in that we speak about at the end of what messages I got for you, but you literally, um, I did a session with somebody just the other day and they were like, oh my God, I feel relaxed, too relaxed. I'm like, there's no such thing as too relaxed. <laughs> this is it, you, that's just showing you've but got to weird. relax. The feeling, the feeling I'm getting from you, spiritually, I guess, is a feeling I do get from flowers. I'm it, a flower. It, yeah. <laughs> you are a flower, <laughs> Luscious, which is why, you know, I just... You know, sometimes I think we've got to take it from my head and move it to our hearts. And I just feel that this was your gift and your message to the world that your purpose here, because like I said the exact same feeling I get from flowers, I, I, I'm getting that from you. And the way you just described yeah. the binoculars then from the tightness of it, the bud, you're right, those delicate, I, I love the pink one, the light pink one. Um, and those delicate leaves and they go around. But like I said, you can't really pull it apart. It's strong enough for that, but it's yeah. that elegance and that delicacy. So it's, it's, it's delicate yet tough <laughs> isn't it and yeah and that's it and as you mentioned the pink one pink when it comes to the color pink people think it's all delicate and that's typical feminine color but the pink also shows you the strength that was within you as well and i mostly associate that with pink roses um when i was doing a, a reading for a lady in her company and the work that she does with women there were different shades of pink that were coming through for her so there's when you're working with somebody who needs a little bit of a delicate approach to how they're doing things and how they need to move forward and you give them a soft pastel pink if they are passionate and really on fire you know feisty kind of women that we can be then there's this fuchsia pink that you can run with but for you and that pink ranunculus it felt more of a gentle feminine kind of you know sometimes we need to remind ourselves to bring a bit of love 
and a bit more yeah. delicacy to ourselves yeah. rather than just soldiering on. Um, and although my you know, although my country. toughness and my strength and all the rest of it, at, it heart, at the heart of me is love. <laughs> That's at the heart of my being, what I believe in and what I believe in spreading. Mm-hmm. I believe in, in love at, at my heart. Um, but yeah, there's also that toughness to, to make sure I keep that love <laughs> almost. Yeah. You know, because it's a rough world out there that almost wants to take oh, yeah. away from us. And um, so I have my badassery to protect my love. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I, I see strength in that, strength in that too. My darling, I'm not going to keep you for much longer, but I would love you to share with us how our listeners can get in touch with you for this and to feel, as I feel now, that love, that beauty, that inner peace through the healing of, of flowers. So you can contact me on my website, which is evettemunisinger.com, which is my name. Um, and then there is on Facebook under the Spiritual Flower Lady. Um, at Samsara, you're gonna the dark, sorry, Spiritual. Uh, spiritual. <laughs> <That lady. laughs> That's me. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so you can get me there. <laughs> If you and hang with me, you're going, be, you're going to be a wee book cuckoo if you, if you hang with me, love. Oh, no, I'm going to be dancing my way from my lanes now. Every time I go, hi, you know, it's really it's really I'm fun. here today. I might end up, I've got to do something later on today, so I'm going to see if it comes through. <laughs> yeah, okay. So there's your um, your website, uh, Facebook, uh, Spitch Lab, yeah. uh, Spitch Lab, and you're also on Instagram, because I know, because I follow you there too. What's your Instagram Yeah, so on Instagram, there's the Samsara and the Spiritual Flower Lady as well. Fabulous. I think Those you're two you can find them. Brilliant. I think mm-hmm. you're amazing, my darling. Thank you so much for sharing this love and this message with us today, Scrumptious Pie. And I would like to end on a note to say this, my darlings, that um, there's a really wonderful uh, Dutch saying, and I don't know the word for word now, I can't remember it. And all, but it was something like, if you have but two shillings, you must buy a loaf of bread with one, you've got to eat, yeah? You've got to buy a loaf of bread with one and a flour with the other. And that's the importance to fill your soul. And that's the, mm. you know, just two shillings. You don't buy food with both because we must fill our soul too. And by speaking to the wonderful Yvette, spiritual flower lady, <laughs> it brings that back to me, that let's not forget my darlings, through flowers, we can reconnect with our soul. So if yeah. you, my darling, would also love to get your groove back, please get hold of our lovely Yvette. If you've got to get your groove back story to share with me, <laughs> how you got your groove back and could also empower others to make sure you get in touch. But for more information, my darling, and to watch a repeat of this video, don't forget to log on to my website, thesoulbabe.com. Ciao. <laughs> Thank you.